Thank you um, for being here. I know on a weekend you could be lots of different places doing lots of different things, and so we don't take it lightly and that you've chosen to join us, worship, and just be in community with one another. If it's your first time here or I haven't had the opportunity to introduce myself to you yet, I am Pastor Lauren. Um, I work here at Crossbridge, and usually I'm back there in the production booth. Um, This weekend, Pastor Keith and Reagan are at a wedding, and so every once in a while they let me out of my cage and they put a microphone phone on me and they just see what happens. So you never know. Um, But that's where we're at today. Um, But today you're also not just going to hear from me. We're going to have a video a little bit later on where you're going to hear from Christy Seneca, one of our missionaries, and her friend Yuris. Um, And we will share about them in the Dominican Republic and you'll just get to know them a little bit um, better. But before we get there, I want us to look at a passage of scripture together. So if you have your Bible with you or the Bible app on your phone, encourage you to open that up. We're gonna be looking at Revelation chapter seven. Also want to continue to encourage you to take notes. And that's a way that we can just really absorb what God is speaking to us. And then my favorite thing about that is I always have them to look back on um, and to continue to pray through and be challenged by whatever I felt like God was leading me in the moment. And so if you're looking for a guided note option, if you download the Crossbridge app through the App Store or Google Play, um, you can find those notes notes on there as well. Um, Either way, no matter how you're taking notes or looking at scripture, I want us to look at Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. It says this, after this, I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and they held palm branches in their hands. They were shouting with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. So before we go any further today, I wanna take just a moment and pray with you. God, thank you for that truth, for the, the hope that we have, the image that there is when you come back, Lord, the way that we'll be gathered and worshiped with you. So as we sit here today, I just pray that Our hearts are open to you, maybe in a way that they haven't been in a while. God, that our ears would be open to the way that you're speaking to us and challenging us. And God, ultimately when we leave later today, that we would leave looking more like you and being challenged to live more like you. God, I pray that these aren't my words. Um, God, that these would be words directly from you. God, that you would just shove me out of the way and let your truth come, come through in this moment today. It's in your name we pray, amen. All right, I wanna stop here and talk about something really important, like really important, okay? Choir robes. They um, are really important in my life, and maybe not yours, um, but they're a really big deal, okay? So I want you to raise your hand if you've ever worn a choir robe before. If you're online, comment in the chat. I wanna see what we're working with here. Okay, for all of you with your hands down, I'm really sorry, because you have missed out on an opportunity in life. And here's your not so secret secret for you, okay? I love gospel music. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite genre of music. And oftentimes, if you've ever seen a gospel choir, they're wearing a robe. And actually, more than that, a lot of choirs wear robes. When I was at Ottawa High School, I participated in choir for many years. And at the beginning of each year, we'd have a day where we took an all-choir photo. And for this photo, we would be in robes. Now, most people in choir hated this day. They hated the robes. They hated the process. It was probably my favorite day of choir, because in the hallway there was this closet and it was titled the robe closet. And my senior year I was choir president and I was in charge of the robes. And I took it upon myself to make sure that everyone had the right size robe, that nothing was too long. And we put the robe on and we take this, this photo for our choir picture. And I'll let you know, when I put a choir robe on, a gospel Lauren comes out. Um, And so, like I said, I look forward to that day. Fast forward to senior year, Ottawa High School decided that they were gonna get rid of the blue choir robes. And so for our end of year concert, it's a pop concert, my friends and I decided that we were gonna perform Jesus Christ Superstar and that we wanted to use these robes in our performance. And so I want you to understand the pure joy that comes out of me when I'm in a choir robe. So I have this picture for you. Um, That is about as happy as I get. (laughs) that you can say is Lauren in a choir robe. When I transferred to Olivet, I participated in their gospel choir. 
And I will say, no offense to OHS, but their choir robes were a little more top of the line <laughs> than the blue choir robes that have been around for many years. But I didn't have that type of photo to show with you, so I thought that that one would do. But that joy that comes out of me when I'm in a choir robe, times 100 plus, is what I think of when I read this passage, just pure joy and awe being in the presence of God. And when I really stop and try and put myself in the moment, it's overwhelming because I can't always comprehend it. It's, it's hard for me to fully imagine sometimes, but what I can think about is the joy, the awe, and the peace that I think that we will feel when that moment comes. Now, robes are just a small part of that passage of scripture, um, and when we read that passage, it doesn't just say that we're all gonna stand there in our choir robes and just stare at each other, right? Um, if we go back and look at it, it says they were shouting with a great roar. So here's your not so secret secret 2.0, okay? I'm quite loud, like can't whisper loud, um, get shushed by my mom in restaurants loud. I didn't even have to use a microphone in my high school play loud, okay? That's the type of volume that I'm working with. And in fact, this past week we had an all staff retreat and I took it upon myself um, to yell out all of the orders of people's food, that way they could hear them, because my true gifting in life is being the human megaphone. So that is the volume that I have. Um, in fact, some of my friends um, who I'm not going to name like to give me a hard time about my volume um, sometimes, and so I've decided that I have a new defense, that I am just practicing for when Jesus comes back and we're all meant to shout with a great roar. So I'm one step ahead of you. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but I did remember that this once, I did win an award for my volume, because my volume just isn't in my speaking. In gospel choir, I won an award for the loudest singer. I had um, some friends in choir that told me, Lauren, you missed rehearsal, and and we didn't know what we were supposed to sing, and we couldn't hear you. And I was like, you gotta learn your part, man. I'm not always gonna be here. Um, and so the, God just put that back in my head when I was thinking about just the great roar that we will hear on that day. And when I think about that, I, I see that these people were giving their all to God. Every inch of volume that they had in them, they were roaring out, giving it all to God, praising him with everything that they had in them. So I want you to think about maybe the last sporting event or concert you went to, and usually those events are extremely loud, loud right, and working with lots of noise, and the people there are just beyond excited. There's a tangible energy in the room because everyone's there with the same purpose and the same level of excitement unless there's significant other drug them there. Uh, but everyone else is excited to be there. But we can take that feeling, multiply it, like I said, by 100 plus. And that's what we're gonna experience when we are surrounded with everyone else, all other believers, when Jesus comes back. And as much as I love choir robes, and I really do appreciate my volume on a good day, we haven't even hit the best part yet. So I want us to go back and look at the rest of verse nine. It says that there was a vast crowd from every nation and tribe and people and language. Did some research this week. There are 195 countries in the world and there are over 7,000 different languages spoken. I tried to Google and do some research on how many different people groups there are, um, but it's really hard to figure out because there are still many areas of the world that we, haven't, we don't have tons of research on. But if we imagine all of those people coming together, and it's not even just this current generation, it's generations before and before and before, it's a whole lot of people with a whole lot of languages and a whole lot of color in the room. But that's what gets me truly excited, diversity in the way that God intended it to be when we can come together no matter our social status, race, ethnicity, color of our skin, and we come together with the same purpose, proclaiming the same thing, just saying it in a different language. That salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. I'm reminded that that is what we're created for, to be in true community with each other and to be proclaiming the gospel with everything we have in us. But I wanna clarify something. These things that we're talking about, being in diverse community and proclaiming the gospel, aren't things that we have to wait for Jesus to come back to do. In Acts chapter one, verses seven through eight, we're reminded that the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We aren't just called to sit back and twiddle our thumbs until Jesus comes. It's just the opposite, telling people about Jesus to the ends of the earth. And that's a really big task. We have a big earth. <laughs> There's lots of people, lots of countries, lots of places to go. And so friends, we got a whole lot of work to do. Jesus gave us the mission and I think it's time that we get to work. Sharing Jesus with those that live down the road in our communities and yes, also other countries as well. But what we do know is that this isn't something that I'm gonna accomplish by myself, that one person isn't going to do all of this work. Instead, each of us has been called to do unique things. We have each been given a unique purpose and mission based on the talents and the gifts and the dreams and the desires that God has placed in our heart. And we do that through the way that we love people, live life with people, handle conflict with people, and ultimately just walk and talk with those around us, leading people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ in our everyday walking and talking. I have a pastor friend who once said, um, she said, I wish that people would stop saying that Jesus should just come back because when Jesus comes back, I want him to be proud and I don't think he'd be proud right now. And I stopped and have thought about that since she said that, and it truly has changed my perspective on the second coming of God and what that's gonna look like. And although I will say I'm really excited to meet Jesus, I also don't really want it to be tomorrow, right? It's that fine balance of we can be excited for when that day is coming, but also recognizing that we have so much to do in the meantime. And it's not just me. You have a unique mission that God has sent you here to complete. Like I said, based on the talents and the desires and the gifts that God has placed on your heart, you can do something that I can't. You know people that I don't. You have skills that I don't. But I want to say that leading people to Jesus is a, is a twofold process because we show Jesus in our actions, but we also have to talk about him with our words. It can't just be one or the other. It has to be both and. If we just talk about Jesus but our actions don't line up, we're hypocrites. Flip it, if we just live like Jesus and we never give a name and a face to the man who's changed us from the inside out, people aren't gonna have the opportunity to come to know him. When we show Jesus in the way we live our lives and we tell people about him, it helps them to connect the dots, gives them the opportunity to join us, puts a name to the reason why you are living the way that you do, and it helps people to see Jesus through people just like you and me. So practically, what does that mean? Because that's a really big goal, Lauren. That's probably what you're thinking. And I know it's a really big goal, so I want us to help us to break it down into something that we can tangibly leave here with today. I want us to go back and read that passage again to remind ourselves of the end goal. Why are we doing what we do? Revelation chapter seven says, after this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great roar, salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the lamb. What that passage reminds us is that we should be working to increase the number of believers. There's a fancy word that the church likes to throw throw around called evangelism. And simply what that means is what we said earlier, talking to people about Jesus and living your life in a way that points people to Jesus. Reminds us that we should be seeking out diverse community, that we should be praising God on a regular basis, both in our individual private daily lives, but also what you're doing here this weekend, gathering and worshiping in community. I think that that scripture says that we should all be wearing choir robes all the time, but probably most of you are gonna disagree with me. And some of you out there might be saying, Lauren, forget everything else you said. I wanna eat more bacon, and I wanna travel more, and I wanna sleep more. Those are good things, but I don't see it in scripture. So we have a bigger mission that God is pointing us to, that we should be living our lives for Jesus, working to show people and tell people about who Jesus is every place that we go. 
And one of the biggest things on my heart is that the best way that we can do that is through mission work, through short-term mission trips and mission partnerships with people like Christy and Sam Seneca, who we'll talk more about a little bit later. But I think that is the best way that the church can come together and accomplish those big goals that we've laid out. Mission trips provide us with an opportunity to experience the diverse community that that passage talks about. Provides an opportunity to learn more about your faith. Provides an opportunity to share that faith with people that you might meet. They provide an opportunity for us to worship with others that maybe worship a little bit different than you. Provides an opportunity to meet new people, to step out of our comfort zones so that we can grow through them. Ultimately, they provide an opportunity to experience, embrace, and love the global church in a way that you can't get sitting in your local church on the weekend. As I mentioned, Crossbridge here, we have a mission partnership with Sam and Christy Seneca, and they currently serve as missionaries in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And if you haven't been around for a while, the Senecas are actually local Crossbridgers um, who felt this call on their life and have stepped into that call to do overseas mission work full time. And let me tell you, we are beyond blessed to be able to work alongside of them. It is awesome to have any mission partnership. It is an extra special thing when you know the people and you can communicate with them in a way that you can communicate from their home church. And so I just want to take a minute today and truly thank all of you on behalf of the Senecas, but also myself, for all of you who we know have been praying for and supporting them in financial matters and keeping up with them in their day-to-day -day lives. Just this past week, we held a spaghetti fundraiser um, through the new chalet, and the goal was to help fund the kids' schooling costs. It's one of the largest um, finance um, burdens that the Senecas have. Um, and so I'm here to tell you that we have raised $3,261 um, to help fund, yes, that's applause worthy. <laughs> That money will be going sent to help fund the school, uh, the kids' schooling costs. And then a couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, the opportunity that we have to join them um, in some disaster relief work that they're going to be participating in and heading up um, in the DR. And we are sending over $2,000 um, for that hurricane relief that's going to provide the tools and equipment um, and extra personnel to really just rebuild after the storms that have come through. And more than that, we are sending another team from Crossbridge um, on a short-term mission trip in October of 2023. And we're gonna go through the details of that in a little bit. But there is something special, like I said, about having a partnership. When we've gone back um, multiple times now, meeting people and building long-term relationships, is an extra special thing. And so today I want you to hear from one of our friends from the Dominican Republic. His name is Eurice. Eurice serves alongside Sam and Christy. Um, he's on staff with them. He's kind of like their assistant. He's their right-hand man. He does all the things which you'll hear about. Um, and so Christy recorded a video with Eurice for us to get to know him a little bit better. And I'd like to introduce to you Eurice and Christy. Hi, Eurice. Hi, Christy. Thank you for uh, meeting with me today and sharing with our home church, uh, Crossbridge. You've met some people from Crossbridge when they've come down to the DR, um, and we're anticipating more people from Crossbridge coming next year. So we thought it would be fun if they could meet you. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to ask you some questions, um, and you can answer them, and I'm going to make you do it in English. So you can practice your English a little bit more. Why English? You know Spanish? <laughs> and maybe when they come, they'll have practiced Spanish, so then uh, you can speak in Spanish. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, that is a good idea. <laughs> okay, so can you tell me how long you've been serving with Nazarene Mission Teams? Uh, I decided to involve in the working with the ministry in the 2015-2016 uh, with Beverly Brown, which is the tier of the coordinator in, the, in that time. And yeah, I have maybe six, seven years in the ministry. And yeah, I sometimes I am involved in the construction stuff and mm -hmm. the projects. And I am the guy, I guide to the team when they are here. And sometimes I work with electricity to yeah. the projects. So you pretty much do a lot with teams, construction, yeah. pretty much anything that needs to be done, you're the guy. Yeah, yes. exactly. That is Sometimes true. I make the breakfast. <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes you make the breakfast too. That is true. I did make you make breakfast a lot this last summer since yeah. I was pregnant and tired. <laughs> um, 
but uh, mission trips with teams coming aren't, isn't the only way you serve here. You also serve with your local church, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. can you tell me just um, a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, I am the local local, local church yep. for my uh, NY. Yep. Uh, and I serve in the, in the music ministry too. Yes. I play some time when I have time for going to my local church to, to share with my my uh, community and my team. Yeah. And yeah, and maybe la last week, so I helped a lot with the uh, BBS. Yeah. BBS. Bible was, school. Yeah, Bible school. And, and yeah, it's a great. Just I ha I try to help and, and involve some time and whatever the my church, my local church needs to I involve. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of like a super volunteer. Youth, yeah. music, Bible school, whatever. whatever. Whatever I can do, I just I try to do it. In, in yeah. Okay, so you didn't always go to church. So can you tell us how you ended up at church and how you became a Christian? Oh yeah, uh, my family moved in the 2008 mm -hmm. from our city to here to yeah. Arriba Santo Domingo. In some neighborhoods, they they start uh, to give Bible school Wednesday in the in the afternoon, maybe five or six, and Saturday in the afternoon too. Mm -hmm. And Sunday we walk to the church. So in the Sunday local church where I am yeah. right now, and yeah, sometimes just we walk and every Sunday in the morning, everybody in the neighborhood they they wake up in the morning. We go to the Sunday today to, <laughs> to the church. And yeah, I I remember when I said to Jesus Christ my help and it's in 20, 2012. 2012. 2012 okay. or 2011, I said to Jesus Christ my, my help one Sunday from uh, Domingo Resurrection, what does it mean that uh, Resurrection Sunday? Oh, Easter Sunday. Easter. So on Easter Sunday is when you ask Jesus into your heart. Yeah, exactly. To the church. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So because other people in the church came and invited your family, that's how you ended up at yeah. the church. Yeah. That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. And now you do that. Exactly, yes. I love it. I am here for six. <laughs> okay, last question. What is your favorite thing when a team is here? Uh, I like because when they come to here, I I learn about his story. Mm -hmm. uh, every person has one story about how God called to the ministry of the church and what they do in the church too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something more is about a uh, hip professional. Yeah. What they doing in the normal life. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Crossbridge, for letting us share with you. Um, thank you for your support, and we're excited to maybe spend some more time with you in person, maybe next year. So yeah. we will see you see then. You. Bye.